The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst. And he said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. Jesus gave an invitation on Pentecost for his disciples to receive the Holy Spirit. And he says, peace be with you. To receive the Holy Spirit, we must first begin by accepting Jesus' invitation an invitation to be at peace with God, our Heavenly Father. Embracing the Father's values because this is a family and we must have values by which we live by. Some of these values concern what is called the four precepts of the church. Like these are four non-negotiables that brings us into intimacy with God, our loving Father, and it calls us to attention of the beauty of the family customs and, yes, rules. How many of you, how many of you have families? Do you all have rules in the house? So don't complain about the church. The first precept is to attend Sunday Mass. In other words, get to the family dinner every week. Attend the Sunday Mass. The second precept is to accept the need and desire to get to reconciliation when necessary, but at the very least, once a year. I don't know anybody who can go a whole year without sin except the Blessed Virgin. So I think that the church is a little bit liberal on that one. Then it, we're obliged to receive Holy Communion in the state of grace. That means we can receive Holy Communion if there are no, more, no mortal sins affecting us, which is why we need reconciliation. <clears throat> so if you have experienced mortal sin, do not be afraid because God wants to give you his peace and he wants to reconcile you, and that's why he gives us the opportunity of this sacrament of reconciliation. The fourth precept,
precept of the church is to honor the holy days of obligation. I'm sorry to say, but in the times we live in right now, um, it seems like people just don't pay attention to the holy days of obligation. It's a marvelous time to have sort of a, a feast and an inspiration for something great that God has done. And so Jesus, we see in the, in, in the gospel here, he breathes on the disciples. He breathes on them, and at, that is the vehicle of giving them the Holy Spirit. It affected them so much that they became bold, bold in proclaiming the message of the gospel. One of my favorite pieces of this is in the fourth chapter of the Acts of the Apostles. St. Peter gets up and he says, And now, O Lord, look upon their threats and grant that your servants continue speaking your word with all boldness while you stretch forth your mighty hand to heal and signs and wonders are manifest through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. And when they had prayed, the place in which they were gathered together was shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit and continued speaking the word of God with boldness. I'm always amused at this passage because when I was a pastor in Lancaster, I was sitting in innocently before Mass in the chapel reading this very scripture, and the house began to shake. I'm not kidding. I found out a couple of days later that an earthquake had taken place just out in Vermont. place was shaken. I took it as kind of a sign to start rattling cages to get people to come to our loving Father. Pentecost equips us with seven gifts, the seven classical gifts of the Holy Spirit. These are the gifts that are especially emphasized at the Sacrament of Confirmation. And these are all listed in Scripture. I want to walk through these seven gifts to unpack some of the meaning that's going on here. The first gift of the Holy Spirit is wisdom. Grant me the spirit of wisdom that I, that I may not be attached to the perishable things of this world, but aspire only after the things that are eternal. In other words, to understand things from God's point of view and the vision of heaven where we want to be. This gift involves also the contemplation of the things of God, to think and wonder about them, like, for example, the Holy Trinity. How can anyone explain that? But in prayer, we can appreciate it with great wonder. Something that happened to me in contemplation a few years ago is the wonder of the Eucharist. And I was looking at the monstrance, staring in there, and I said to myself, Lord, I only see a piece of bread. But I know there's more there, but I can't see it. And the thought came into my mind that it was not for me, but it went like this. Your soul sees me. The interior life that God gave me as a soul. And this is for all of us. 
your soul sees him. We can't hear things like this and bring them to memory unless we really contemplate who God is. And the Holy Spirit will give us the insights. Another thing about wisdom is to seek godly solutions to problems. One of the best places to find these godly solutions is by simply obeying the family etiquette, the Ten Commandments. If we all lived and strived to make the Ten Commandments real and useful for us, the world would look like a different place. The second gift of the Holy Spirit, grant me the spirit of understanding that my mind may be enlightened with the light of your divine truth. In other words, to understand the truths of the faith, the truth that we need the sacramental life because it's how Jesus physically touches us and has an encounter with us. And this is most seen in the Holy Eucharist, but it's seen as the water pours over the infant in baptism. It's seen in the unction of confirmation. It's seen in the rings and the vows of a married couple. The oil of healing in the sacrament of the sick, these are all touching us. And to understand that these are truths of our faith where God has a personal encounter with us. Grant me the spirit of counsel that I may ever choose the surest way of pleasing God and gaining heaven. Our highest priority, counsel tells us, should be gaining heaven. This becomes an awakening for us. The Holy Spirit in the gift of counsel becomes an awakening us for our conscience to judge our actions properly so that we are on the pathway to heaven. And mind you, conscience is not an emotional thing. Conscience comes from understanding Scripture, being yielding to the church's teachings, and having a life of prayer where God coaxes us and helps us emerge with his wisdom to press on. This conscience interiorly moves us in the right direction. It's not about an emotion. And I'll tell you, right there, Jesus was on the cross. It was not, that was an emotional experience. But he chose to stay there, even if it hurt. He made a choice to honor his father. Grant me the spirit of fortitude that I may bear my cross with you and courageously overcome all things opposed to my salvation. This is what fortitude does. Fortitude means that I'm going to have the courage to stand no matter who ridicules me. I'm going to stand against evil, even in the face of embarrassment, in ridicule, and in persecution. I'm going to doggedly press on for Jesus Christ. Grant me the spirit of knowledge that I may know God and know myself and grow perfect in the science of the saints. This is to, the, to know God and love him and know that he loves us because we are his dear children. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand that. The Holy Spirit came in the form of a dove over Jesus at his baptism, and from the sky they heard, This is my beloved in whom I'm well pleased, which is something to be affixed to each one of us. He loves us as his dear children. 
the, the gift of knowledge helps me understand that I am called to wear a halo someday. Because God wants me there. And the Holy Spirit and the gift of knowledge opens our eyes to the fact that there is a mission that we need to accomplish, a mission which we were born for. And it may be in secret, but when we stand before God in judgment, it will be revealed and you will be wonderfully surprised. Grant me the spirit of piety <clears throat> that I will find the service of God sweet and amiable. In other words, worship. The Holy Spirit instills a desire for worship that's beyond a sense of duty. Oh, I have to go to Mass on Sunday. I'd rather go to the soccer games, the football field, whatever. To worship and serve beyond a sense of duty. And it's where we develop an esteem for God and do it joyfully. Grant me the spirit of fear of the Lord, that I may be filled with a loving reverence toward God and have the strength to avoid anything that leads me to displease Him. In other words, I will do everything I can not to compromise my love for God. Not to compromise my relationship with Him. The spirit of fear of the Lord inspires us through the Holy Spirit about the greatness of God and how awesome He is as Lord. The fear of the Lord makes us understand that we need God. That we need to have a dependence on the Lord as a child is dependent on their parent. Hence, we call God our Father. The fear of the Lord means I'll do anything necessary to never lose my love for God. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, the scriptures tell us, because it builds in us a desire to please God. When you really love someone, when you really love somebody, you have a desire to please them. I want what's best and what's good for you. And so we do that in our relationship with God. We give him our best. And yet this is called self-giving love, which mimics what Jesus did on the cross. He gave his life for us. We give our life for him. We have a mutual exchange of self-giving. And in that way, our needs are met not by taking, but because we gave. Since we're on the topic of the Holy Spirit, I think we need to take confirmation a lot more seriously. If there's anyone here who has not been confirmed, you should discuss that with yourselves. We will have confirmation classes sometime this year so that we can bring people to confirmation. Why? Confirmation is the sign Jesus has marked on us with the seal of his spirit. There's something indelibly imprinted in our soul to clothe us with power from on high that we may be witnesses of Jesus Christ. Confirmation deepens baptismal grace. 
confirmation recognizes that God is our loving Father because of the grace he's poured out on us to be his dear children. Confirmation unites us more firmly in Christ. Confirmation increases the gifts of the Holy Spirit in us. If you like these seven gifts or you think you need work on them and you haven't been confirmed, I've got the supply line for you. Deepens our bond with the church, strengthens us in the Holy Spirit to defend our faith and to confess Christ boldly not, and not be ashamed of the cross. And so we pray. Divine Spirit, renew your wonders in this our age as in a new Pentecost. And grant that your church, praying perseveringly and insistently with one heart and mind, together with Mary, the mother of Jesus, and guided by blessed Peter, may increase the reign of div our divine Savior, a reign of truth and justice, a reign of love and peace. Amen. Regina Jenny, Alleluia, ora pro nobis Deum, Alleluia.